Hi, fifth grade. I hope you had a good week off. I um, need you to turn in your work because um, as of right now, um, the, your grade is not very good. So I need, um, Cooper, I need you to get that work turned in to me. Um, somebody's got to drop it off to school so that way I can um, start getting some grades in the book for you. Um, this isn't a free for all. This is you actually have to do the work, okay? And you actually need to do a good job. Um, the writing pieces have not been all that great. I need you to really show me some effort, please. Okay, um, otherwise we'll be having a chat with Mrs. Kalman and I don't think she's going to be very happy to hear that from me because I know that um, you had you um, did not do well for Mrs. Vodan and Ms. DeSillis and you're continuing that same pattern with me. So this is not okay. This is You don't get to be remote just because you want to have fun. So I suggest you start turning some work in and you start taking this seriously or there, is go there are going to be serious consequences. So I would like you to have module seven, lesson one out in front of you. I need you to follow along with this and then I need you to do the work and I need you to hand it in. Alrighty, so we're going to be using benchmarks and number sense to estimate. So Ms. Fong mixes water, glue, and laundry detergent together to make slime. The amount of each ingredient is a fraction of a liter. Use a visual model to estimate the total number of liters of ingredients she mixes together. All right, so if we have our whole amount and we can see that she has three eighths water, two fifth glue, one tenth laundry detergent. So none of our denominators um, make sense, right? None of our denominators work for us, but we can find a common denominator. If I look at my eight, my five, and my 10. So I have three eighths, two fifths, one tenth. Remember when we talked before about finding a common denominator. So uh, something that these all have in common to me looks like it's 40. Because if I multiply eight times five, I get 40, five times eight, I get 40, and 10 times four, I get 40. So they all can have a 40 in common. So in order to get 40 for my denominator for my three eighths, I'm gonna have to multiply the top and the bottom by five. So then I get 15 fortieths, 40ths. My two fifths, I'm gonna have to multiply my top number, my numerator, and my denominator by eight. So then I will have 16 fortieths. And then my one tenth, I'm gonna, whoops, I'm gonna multiply my numerator and my denominator by four. So I get four fortieths. So now I have numbers that I can add together. So 15 fortieths plus 16 fortieths plus four fortieths. Now that they have a common denominator, I can add them together. So when I look at these numbers, I can see that this makes it easy, right? 16 plus four, that is easily 20. And then I can add 20 plus 15, and that's 35 fortieths. So if my whole thing was out of fortieths, then 35 fortieths is almost one liter. So by estimating, we can say that this is almost one liter. Because we are very close. If I had 40 over 40, that would be one whole, correct? So this isn't quite there yet. It's it's five fortieths less, but we're so close, so we can use that as our answer. All right. So Ms. Fong has some bottles of copper powder for science experiments. She uses 7 eighths of bottle, 2 thirds bottle, and 5 twelfths bottle. About how many bottles of copper powder does she use? What expression represents the situation? Well, we know that she has this much of copper powder, right? So she has 7 eighths plus 2 thirds plus five twelfths, right? That would be our addition problem. But we can't add denominators that are different. So 
let's see if we could use the three number lines and benchmarks. Benchmarks are the numbers zero, half, and whole. What are they closest to? Okay? So if we think of seven eighths, seven eighths on our number line is here. What is it closest to? It's closest to one whole. Two thirds goes here. What is it closest to? Two thirds is closest to one half. See how it's closer to one half, if I look here, than one whole? And then I have five twelfths. Five twelfths is closest to one half. So if I have one whole, one half, and one half, about how much does she have? So we would be adding one plus one half plus one half. And we know that one half plus one half is one whole. Oops, sorry. One half plus one half is one whole, and one whole plus one whole is two. So Ms. Fong uses about two bottles of copper powder. Now we don't have, that's not the exact amount, but we want to just know about. We want to have an, an estimate. Each group in science class has, two liter, has a two liter container of distilled water. Group A uses one and nine tenths liters, and group B uses one and three eighths liters. About how much more distilled water does group A use than B? About how much more? So this is not an addition. This would be a subtraction problem. So this would be one and nine tenths minus one and three eighths. Again, our denominators are not the same, but we can try and figure this out. If I look at this number, one and nine tenths, which two whole numbers does it go in between? If I have a number line, zero, one, and two, right? It lies in between the one and the two. So is the fractional part of the mixed number closest to zero, half, or one whole? So is this part, the nine tenths, closer to zero, one half, or one whole? Well, if we break this up, it's gonna be way over here, right? So it's gonna be closer to one whole. So, what whole number could we use to estimate one and nine tenths? Well, this would be one whole and nine tenths is almost a one whole, so it would be closer to the two. Okay? Then we're gonna use mitch marks to estimate the value of one and three eighths. Well, let's look at our three eighths. Zero, one half, and one whole. I know that four eighths is the same as one half. And this is a little less than that, right? It would be over here. So it's closest to one half. So this is one closer to one and one half. So we need to now subtract. Two minus one and one half equals one half. So group a used about one half liter more. Not exactly, but almost. All right, a weather station reports that 11 twelfths foot of snow fell yesterday afternoon and one third foot fell yesterday evening. Estimate the amount of snow that fell yesterday. So we want this one would be an addition, right? Because we want to know how much total snow fell. So if we have our number lines, remember this is an estimate, 11 twelfths is going to be closer to zero, one half, or one whole. 11 twelfths is going to be closer to one whole because 11 twelfths would be way up here. One third. One third would be here somewhere. So one third is closer to one half. 
So one whole and one half would be one and one half feet of snow fell yesterday. Okay, nine tenths plus one twelfth. Well, nine tenths on my number line is almost one whole, right? Be up here somewhere, so it's almost one whole. One twelfth is way down here. That's almost zero. So one plus zero is one. So it's closest to one. Five eighths minus three fifths. So we've got our zero, our half, and our whole. Five eighths. We know that 4 eighths is 1 half, so 5 eighths is a little bit more than a half, but not a lot more. So that's closer to 1 half. 3 fifths would be over, well, 2 and a, so it would be actually just a little bit smaller than 5 eighths. So that's 2 halves. So this would be 1 half minus 1 half, so this is going to be about 0 if we're rounding. Okay, and on your own section, you can do this independently, pause the video, do it independently, and then come back, or just stay right on um, to do this together. So history. In the 1800s, wagon trains traveled west along the Oregon Trail. A wagon train traveled from Missouri to Wyoming in one and two-thirds months, and from Wyoming to Utah in three-fifths month. About how many months did it take the wagon train to travel from Missouri to Utah? So we have one and two-thirds months and three-fifths of a month. So we want to know about how long it took them to go all the way from Missouri to Utah. So this would be one and two-thirds plus three-fifths. <clears throat> So if we're estimating, we know we have a one hole here, and then we need to figure out, well, where would our two-thirds lie on our benchmark? Well, two-thirds would be over here somewhere, and it's closer to one-half. Three-fifths would be over here somewhere and that's also closer to one half so you would have one and one half plus one half so that would be about two months all righty Use best mark benchmarks to estimate the sum or the difference. So 1 and 5 twelfths minus 2 thirds. So 5 twelfths is just a little bit less than half. So this would be 1 and 1 half minus 2 thirds is close to a half. So that would equal 1. 7 tenths plus 7 eighths. 7 tenths is, well, let's see, 7 eighths is definitely closer to one whole. 7 tenths would be closer to, well, 5 tenths would be a half, so this would be closer to a half. So that would equal 1 and 1 half. Here's the number lines and benchmarks to estimate. 1 and 1 third minus 5 sixths. So we have 1 and 1 third, which is closer to 1 and a half. 1 and 5 sixths. Oh no, sorry, it's not 1 and 5 sixths. Ah! Cross that off. <laughs> 5 sixths is way down here. Closer to one whole. So we have 1 and 1 half minus 1 whole. So that would equal, it's about 1 half. And we're going to skip number 8. Okay? So I need you to go and do your module 7.1, your independent more practice slash homework, the black and white worksheet page.
<laughs> Excuse me. Sorry. I'm going to have you do... Looks like I'm going to have you do the whole thing. Okay. Yep. You're going to do the whole thing. Um, questions 1 through 12. Make sure on the uh, multiple choice there are, is more than one answer. It says check, select all that applies. So make sure you're looking at all of the answers to select the correct answers. When you're finished, please make sure this um, gets returned to school so I can check it over. All right. Thank you. Have a great day.